Hey everybody, welcome back to another Jackson Jet Setting Cruise Review. Today we are reviewing my Allure of the Seas Cruise. It's a four-night voyage down to Nassau, Bahamas and Coco Cay, Royal Caribbean's private island. Let's see how it went. I'm going to tell you all what I thought about the ship itself, the overall condition, what I thought about the itinerary, what I thought about the food on board, both the main dining room, the wind jammer, and the specialty dining. I'm going to talk a little bit about the bars as well, activities, things to do on the ship. I'm going to try and cover everything in this video in a decently short amount of time. Now before I begin, a quick pitch here for the other videos on the channel around this cruise. I do have a daily vlog series up with every single day of my voyage, so if you want to dive deeper into what a four-night voyage looks like going down to Nassau and Coco Cay, you can take a look at that. And then also I have a full ship tour of the Lure of the Seas. I will put all this down in the show notes so you can click in and watch all that stuff. If you like this type of video, please, please, please hit subscribe and like this video. It really helps the channel out. Now, the Allure of the Seas, I didn't really know what to expect besides my one cruise on Oasis of the Seas. That's the only Oasis-class ship I had been on before. The Oasis has been amplified, so they've added a lot of things to the ship, even though it is the oldest Oasis-class ship, hence the class name Oasis. They usually name it after the first ship in the class. So Allure of the Seas hasn't been amplified yet. They actually just announced that they will be doing that and putting some serious money into the ship. Overall, I felt like the condition of the ship was spectacular. Everything seemed very new in terms of like the condition of things. Uh, I did notice that there were some areas that uh, I haven't found on other Royal Caribbean ships, namely some of the specialty restaurants like Sabor and then also uh, Samba, which is up on the top deck in the Brazilian Steakhouse. Both these places are amazing. Actually, I thought they were really good value compared to some of the other classics on Royal Caribbean ships like Chops and Giovanni's. Another noticeable omission on board were there were no water slides. This really took me by surprise. I honestly did not know there weren't going to be any water slides on board. I like to go down the water slides once or twice, and I know it's really important for the kids, so I want to make note there were no water slides on board the Allure of the Seas. Now, Royal Caribbean will be changing that. They'll also be adding the Ultimate Abyss, the dry slide that goes down all the way to the boardwalk. That's a popular addition to some of the Oasis class ships. So just look out for that after the renovation. That's gonna be changed. Um, but the rest of the ship, you know, you have your flow riders, you have your zip line, your mini golf, uh, your sports court, bunch of other activities spread out throughout the ship. It's kind of par for the course in terms of Royal Caribbean activities. Um, I participated in trivia a whole bunch. Those are spread out kind of between the karaoke bar and schooners. Um, but overall, I feel like the number of activities on board, there are many, but sometimes there's just like random gaps where there's not like something uh, that caught my eye. Maybe that's just me, but I just felt like there could have been maybe a few more organized activities on board, um, just given how big this ship actually is. Now I actually want to talk about the key, which I did buy for this voyage. So the key is an extra charge uh, opportunity that Royal Caribbean sells to its guests in the app. I got it at a pretty significant discount, I think about $35 per day. For myself, I was sailing solo this cruise, so I didn't have to pay for that extra person. But basically what that gets you is early embarkation, it gets you an onboard lunch that's sort of hosted by uh, Chops Grill, so a fancier lunch than your Windjammer. Uh, you get to drop off your carry-on bags at the main dining room and they'll deliver them to your stateroom, and a number of other opportunities throughout the voyage to save time or get a more premium experience, like special times at the rock climbing wall, the flow rider, um, and then also you have reserved seating at all of the shows that you still have to make a reservation for those shows, but you do have reserved seating within those shows. You have like premium seating and you don't have to like camp out for an hour before uh, the show to get those. So overall, um, I felt like the key was really good value. Um, it does include the internet package as well. So if you're going to get the internet already, and many people do, what that difference between the base internet package is and what the key is going for, that's basically what you're paying extra for. I felt like between uh, my welcome aboard lunch and the disembarkation breakfast, which was a little bit premium, I got a nice little steak there too, uh, plus some of the reserve seating options, that was really great. Um, you know, I, I, I can probably live without the early embarkation. 
But what I really did love was dropping off my carry-on bags in the main dining room to be delivered to my stateroom. I have a lot of carry-on bags, you know, I have a heavy backpack and I got a rollerboard. It's kind of annoying to drag uh, throughout the ship until my stateroom was ready at 1 p.m. So that was a great feature. I actually really liked that. Now, the reserve show seating did work really well. Unfortunately, the uh, Aqua Theater show was canceled many times during the voyage once due to weather and then due to some technical difficulties and then actually some uh, performers got injured, which is unfortunate. So I didn't get a chance to really use that. I did sit there for a bit waiting for the show that I thought I would get to see. So uh, that's not really the key's fault uh, or really Royal Caribbean. It's just, you know, it's the way it goes. And I know they've been correcting the Aqua Theater for the Icon class to prevent some of the weather delays that happen uh, fairly often, it seems, on the Oasis class ships. Now, in terms of the main dining room, I did not get to try the main dining room food on this voyage. I had another Royal Caribbean ship uh, coming up later in the trip, actually, that I decided to try out the main dining room food a little bit more. I haven't really ever been that impressed with the main dining room food with Royal Caribbean and they just changed around their menus and took away some items that I would typically get every single night. I'm a big creme brulee fan, for example, and that's something that I just uh, like to get for dessert. They took that away each night, which is not a huge deal. It's really more about the quality of the food, and sometimes it's really hit or miss. So I mostly hung out at the uh, specialty restaurants for two of the nights of my four-night voyage, uh, as I previously mentioned, and then I took a look at the Windjammer a couple nights. Lots of options there. Felt like the quality of the food there was perfectly fine. You also get to see what the food looks like before you put it on your plate, so I kind of like that sometimes. Uh, I tried the hot dog for a late night snack uh, once or twice. I went to El Loco Fresh, which is here in what they call the Wipeout Cafe, so they kind of added this a little bit later. Uh, that food was really great. So overall, I thought the food was fine. Um, don't really come on board Royal Caribbean that much for the cuisine, uh, unless uh, you know I'm excited about a specialty restaurant. So overall, uh, not a bad experience dining on board Allure of the Seas. In terms of my cabin, I was really excited to try out what was an interior cabin, but actually had a view of the outside world. So overlooked the boardwalk, I actually could see a little bit of the sea outside of my window. And this is an inside cabin, so I think this is honestly a major score um, and a big savings over an ocean view and even a balcony. So um, overall, I love the location of it too. There were some secret stairs that popped out right next to the rock climbing wall and it was quick to get down to the boardwalk and other activities on the ship. Um, it's a big ship, so being kind of close to some action is always great. Um, I felt like uh, on my last cruise I was just really far away, and it's a massive ship, and there's going to be a lot of walking, which I don't necessarily mind the steps on cruise vacations. Extra calories burn. There's going to be a lot of eating and drinking for sure, um, but I like the location of this cabin. In terms of itinerary, uh, Port Canaveral was the port of embarkation. I feel like it's really easy to get there from... Orlando and Ubers were not too expensive. It's about $60 one way from most of the hotels in the Orlando area, which if you're splitting that across a few people in your cabin, not a bad deal and a little cheaper than the transfers that they sell you. Now, Lord of the Seas is mostly doing these short voyages down to the Bahamas. Uh, Nassau, Bahamas, never going to be my favorite port. I did like my excursion, though, to Baja Mar. It was cool to check out a new place, and it's a very high-end resort. Got to get a Hyatt night as well if you want to see a full tour. I do have that on my channel as well. And then Coco Cay, it's always a great stop. Um, I think there's a lot of things to do. It's a second time there, I believe, at this point, and I just really liked my experience. Uh, really nice beaches, uh, decent weather, though could have been a little bit better. Um, I know they can't control the weather, so, you know, that's not going to be Royal Caribbean's fault at all. I've had really an awesome stay there before. So, amazing thrill water park. If you're into water parks, I definitely highly recommend you purchasing uh, access to that. A couple of charges, but there's a lot of free activities on Coco Cay. We have a full tour of the island on the channel as well. Overall, my cruise on Allure of the Seas was great. I felt like the itinerary could have maybe been a little bit better, not something I would typically fly in for all the way from Arizona. Bahamas is never going to be my favorite itinerary. So if you're a big fan of the Bahamas, I'm sorry, I'm not. But uh, the ship itself, uh, pretty great. I'm excited to see what they add. Um, it's definitely my favorite of the Oasis-class ships that I've sailed on. I have a few more booked in the Oasis-class coming up this year, so I'm excited to try out the other ones. Thanks again for making it this far. If you like this content, like the video and subscribe.